Hey fellas, welcome to part one of Trumpeter's 132nd scale F105G wild weasel build. Now the owner sent me this plane along with the D model to build for him. He wants them both painted similar in the SEA camouflage scheme from Vietnam. And instead of doing, you know, two build videos, what I thought I'd do is I'd build the D model, the single seat version, first so I can get an idea of how the kit goes together, what issues there are, and uh, that way I can do a build model on the G. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so I've already got the D model built up and it's back here and it's a pretty pretty good sized plane. It's uh, I, uh, I feel more comfortable in 32nd scale. I've been building some 148s and I know uh, a couple people mentioned get back to 32nd scale planes and so here I am. But uh, I've got this all in primer, and overall the fit wasn't too bad. Now there are some issues. Now one of the main issues with this 32nd scale 105 kit is the uh, the bottom thin here on the fuselage. Let me see if I can get a get the other one. So this is the D model, and this is the G model. As you can see the two seater. Uh, but the bulbous area, or this bulbous fin down here, is just kind of too big and wide and it's not accurate. So, I've taken care of that on this one. You can see how nice and thin that is. The owner sent me these, uh, let's see, what is this? Um, the Quick Boost um, Ventral Fin. And uh, I will put this on the G model as well, but that's not, it, it wasn't that bad. Um, I was kind of happy to, to build these because I was going to get out of dealing with resin for a while. But he did give me a couple resin parts, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. You just got to cut off that, uh, that, that ventral fin down here and, um, and uh, glue this on. So not that big of a deal. He's also gave me these, I guess they're some kind of air intakes or something on the side. He also sent me some resin, one of those, so uh, I threw those on as well. Now, the detail on this, you know, it's pretty good. When you get into the cockpit, it's not very good. And what I did with this kit, and let's take a look, and I, I think I've got some pictures. I'll show some pictures at the end because it's kind of hard to see. But I did detail up the... Uh, the uh, the the uh, the cockpit and the canopies a little more than what the kit is. Uh, the details, as far as like the instruments and stuff, not that great. Uh, I think this kit was built back in two thousand two or something. So the details, you know, not that great. Whatever. But uh, I ended up doing some some extra detailing, especially with the canopies. Now up here you can see these little uh, mirrors, and I also added. I took some styrene and, and did some scratch building uh, in the windscreen and then in the uh, the canopy because it was pretty much bare. Here's kind of what the I mean with the canopies they don't the kit doesn't give you any extra stuff for the inside. So what I did with the D model since I didn't have any photo etch for it grab this is I ended up just scratch building some detail inside of here and I don't know if yeah there you can kind of pick it up so I used some extra photo etch that I had and some plastic card and I made some framing and stuff on the inside added a little bit of wiring I show a picture at the end so you'll be able to see it but anyway so that's what I did with this one and I think it turned out pretty good now with the G model he supplied a bunch of photo etch and I do show kind of how I do my photo etch, just a, a little tiddly bit, because to be honest with you, I suck at photo etch. But uh, he supplied me with a bunch of photo etch, so I'll be able to detail up the interior of this G model and uh, make it look super cool. He's going to have the cockpits open, or the canopies open. So this should be a pretty cool, interesting build. And then uh, when I'm done building this one, then uh, we'll get to the paint booth and I'll paint both of them. So... I've done enough rattling here at the beginning. Let's get on with the video. Okay, one of the first things you're going to want to do is build up the engine. Now, there's no way to really show the engine unless you 
do a lot of cutting on the uh, fuselage of the plane. So, and Trumpeter does this a lot in their kits. I don't understand it, but they put a lot of detail in their engines. There's a bunch of stuff that goes on here. I'm not going to mess with that because you're not going to see it anyway. <clears throat> it's just a waste of time and it adds extra weight. So what I've done is I've I've uh, glued the two halves. It comes in this half, this half, half. You put it together, slap this little O-ring on here, and then there's this uh, fan that comes in the uh, goes in the front. And this is the only thing really that you might be able to see if you look down in the intakes, which is you're not really going to see it see it unless you shine a flashlight in there. But uh, so I went ahead and, and built this part up. And then the tail end of it fits on this little piece right here. And they go in like this. And then your exhaust nozzle goes back here. And you're good to go. Because then all you have to do is just glue it on here. So it comes basically, I don't know, maybe 10 pieces <clears throat> is all you really have to build up. So... <clears throat> you want to do this first because you can't close up the fuselage halves until you get the engine built and put in there. One of the issues that I found is all these little injector, in, injector pin marks that kind of stick up. And there's two or three of them that uh, are really deep, which I'm going to have to fill in. And uh, again, you're probably not going to see this unless you shine a flashlight into the tail end. I'm going to paint it black and do some weathering on the inside. So even that's going to help cover it up. But just on the off chance you'd see these injector pin marks, i got to get rid of these. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little Dremel tool, and I've got a Diamond Burr. <clears throat> and I got these at Harbor Freight, and they're really cheap. It's a whole set. Uh, I forgot what I paid for it, maybe 4 or $5. I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. It, uh, it was pretty inexpensive. So basically, I'm just coming along here. And I'm just getting in here in between. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just grinding these off. And what I'll do is I'll take this little, I don't know, it's kind of like, I guess, a plastic or something, little um, brush. I'm just going to come in here and try to get some of those crumblies off. And there's going to be some that stick. Ah. Okay, and then I can also come in with my little rounded uh, exacto blade and kind of get whatever little remnants I can out of there without destroying the detail surrounding it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because you're, you're not going to see a lot of this, but kind of got the, got the line there, didn't I? Wasn't quite as careful right there. It looks like a mess. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Mr. Cement S and I'm gonna come along in here and oops, forgot one. I'll have to come back and get that. That one right there. But this stuff is going to melt the plastic just a little bit and smooth that out. And again, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to... I mean, if this was uh, on the outside, you probably would be able to notice it if it was on the outside of the plane. But since this is going to be dark anyway, 
Now I think this is going to suffice. And that's how you kind of clean up trumpeters little uh, injector pin messes. Okay. <clears throat> Now the seats that Trumpeter provides, they're not that bad, they're not great. Uh, as far as accuracy goes, I don't think they're entirely accurate, but they do look pretty similar to what the real things look like from the pictures that I've seen. Now, Trumpeter, for some reason, supplies these cushions and they've got the molded in seat belts. The only thing, in my opinion, that's worth, worse than molded in seat belts are um, crappy molded in seat belts, and these are pretty crappy. So, what, I, what I'm doing, I'm just taking my knife, and if I don't cut my finger off, I'm just going to scrape this off. And this is what I did with the other one. Yeah, I'm going to cut my finger off. This isn't this isn't the way you use a, a razor blade. <laughs> just for uh, you younger viewers out there. And when I've got, like in my dirty, nasty thumb, you you can see all those little cuts in there. My thumb's getting hardened to this type of work. I'll come in here and I've just got all these little slices and dices on my my thumb from doing this kind of stuff. Fortunately, I haven't cut myself enough to uh, to get stitches. Now, I've only got stitches twice in my life. And the first time, second time I got them was when I was a kid. I was probably maybe 10, and I cut my finger with an X-Acto blade right there. There's a scar, and that was from uh, working on a model when I was a kid and slicing my finger. Had to get a couple stitches, but... So what I'm doing, I'm just trimming this off, and then I'll take my file... And I'll make seat belts with tape and, and some extra photo etch, which uh, looks a lot better than, than this stuff that they got molded on here. So now I'll take my file, and I'm just going to get rid of the rest of this. It's pretty easy to get rid of it, um, not too bad. But then what you're left with is this kind of flat, mundane seat cushion that really has no texture. Now what I did with the other one, and there are probably a variety of ways to do this. Now I could mold a new seat out of Magic Sculpt, which I've, I've done before on, on different builds. But since this is going to be covered in seat belts, I can add just a little bit of texture with my with my knife blade here. Uh, by just kind of scraping, taking the, the edge and coming along, scraping away some plastic. Maybe scraping away some here, carve a little bit out. So basically I'm just kind of carving the plastic to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more of a feel that it's, that it's a cushion other than just a flat piece of plastic. And again, it's not something that's gonna be real noticeable because it is gonna be a little covered by seatbelts, but 
all those little details I think are important. Kind of hard to do this on camera. But you'll at least get the idea of, of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it here. I could have come in here with a Dremel tool as well and done it that way, but I don't want, also don't want to go so hard that I drill through the plastic. Now what I can do is take my favorite stuff, Mr. Cement S, and I can soften that up. And it's a little more texture than just the plain flat plastic. And then I'll just make my seat belts and throw those on there. Hey. <coughs> All right, something I want to run through. And I'm not going to cover a lot of this just because it's a long and laborious process is photo etch. Now, I've had somebody in the past ask me to show how I do photo etch. I am not the guy to, to look for advice on photo etch, but I am gonna kind of show you how I do it. Now, this kit, and if I haven't shown you the, the cockpit on the one I built yet, I will show it to you in a little bit. Um, but there's not a lot of really good detail in this kit as far as the instruments go. You have the, you know, just some lumps and bumps <clears throat> So this is definitely going to, the photo etch set's definitely going to improve the, the look of the interior. However, um, one of the big issues with this kit is that the kit instrument panel sits way too high. Now on the previous one, I had to cut it down uh, right along here and right along here at the bottom so that it would sit lower and uh, wouldn't look awkward because it just sits too high and there's just a very tiny gap where the pilot would be able to see. So what they've done with this Edward kit is they've adjusted the size of the instrument panel. And I think this is gonna be perfect. And uh, this front instrument panel, it's all one photo etch piece and then you just glue the the uh, the other parts onto it, so it's pretty simple. It's not that bad. Not a not a lot of folding. There is a little bit, but uh, so I can totally disregard the uh, kit instrument panel, and then this is going to sit in here just like so, and that should be at the right height. So I'm not going to have to trim any. Now, just to give you an idea and show you how I'm kind of doing this. I've got this really good stuff. It's called Flexi 5KCA. Now this is the slow type. They have thin, they have regular. Um, I found that it kind of dries out pretty quick, but this slow stuff has lasted a while. And I like this because, you know, when you stick it on there, you still got a little bit of time to move it and it's super strong. So I like this for photo etch parts. So what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit on here. Now you don't want to get too much. And I just kind of smear it everywhere. If you get too much, what happens is it overflows. And then I've got this 
uh, I think this is an RB Productions. It's kind of like a wax pencil and allows you to pick up the photo etch. So I can just pick it up with this, stick it on there and kind of adjust it. And uh, it's good to go. So there's my finished instrument panel. Now I did have to put a little shroud and I cut that out of uh, styrene tubing for this, uh, I guess it's some kind of a, a radar thing, I don't know, uh, it, whatever this gizmo is right here, but I did cut out a little shroud with that tubing and put it in there and then painted it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with uh, Mod Podge, and this is the Gloss Mod Podge. And what this is going to give me are these are shiny, almost like a glass-like instrument dial. And I'll kind of show you how I do this real quick. And I'll take a fine brush. And this is also going to help uh, glue, uh, help with the adhesion of this top part of the photo etch onto the back part of the photo etch. So I'm just going to get some, and I'm just going to paint it in the dials. And this is gonna dry super clear and it's gonna give the effect of, of glass on these dials. And it's just a little extra added touch that I think adds to the realism. And anywhere there's a dial, I'm going to do this. And it doesn't take too long to dry. Usually within a half an hour, it's, it's all dry, just depending on, on the thickness. Now I'll go around and I'll do all these, and then once it dries, I'll show you a picture of it, and uh, it, it really does improve the look of it. 